Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a complete new crossbreeding guide. I already have two crossbreeding videos on this channel and both have done extremely well. So thank you to everyone who's been watching and it's been great chatting with everyone who had follow-up questions. In this video, I wanted to combine everything that I've learned and I wanted to answer the reoccurring questions that I get a lot in my DMs and on my videos. A new seed will go through eight stages. The speed at which it reaches each stage depends on your conditions of the plant as well as its genetics. These are the stages. Seed, seedling, sapling, crossbreed, mature, fruiting, ripe, and if you don't harvest it in time, deceased. For crossbreeding, the only stage you need to worry about is the crossbreeding stage. This usually occurs around 20 to 25 minutes depending on your conditions and number of Gs. Once the plant reaches crossbreeding stage, it'll extract the genes from all the neighbouring plants. It doesn't consider its own genes, it only extracts the genes from the ones that it's touching. To learn how to crossbreed, you need to know how to count genes. So as I said before, plants don't consider their own genes when they're crossbreeding. They only care about the surrounding plants. Therefore, we need to make sure that all of the surrounding plants in our planter box have good genes that line up to give us what we want. To count genes, we need to understand how to add basic numbers. So imagine you have a six digit number, because after all, plants have six genes. The setup would look something like this. When you're working with genes, it's important to note that each gene acts individually. So therefore, genes one will not interact with genes two, three, four, five, and six. So therefore, you could draw imaginary lines in between each one of these six digits and then do the addition on their own. Hence why I've used numbers that add up to less than 10. You can use a similar setup to count genes. So every plant has six genes, so the setup would be very similar. Once you've drawn out all your plants, you do the addition. In the example, I'm using three, but you can use as many as you'd like up to eight. Time to count the genes. When you're counting, you're looking for doubles. So let's try and figure out the gene for column one. As you can see here, I've got two Ys in the first column. Therefore, there's a double Y and the Y will take priority. As we move on to the second column, where well you can see that again, we have a double Y. Therefore, the Y will take priority. Moving on to column three, you can see that there's two H's. Therefore, H will take priority. Now, moving on to gene four. Well, there's no doubles, so what's gonna take priority? The reds will always take priority over the greens, if they are single. But if we move on to column five, we can see that there's a double Y. And remember, the doubles will always take priority. Hence, the double Y will take priority over the X. And then finally, in the sixth column, it's quite easy. You can see that there's another double H. Therefore, H will take priority. Written in purple is your final plant's genes. Another thing to note is that if you have no reds and no doubles, then the plant will not crossbreed for that specific gene number. However, this only occurs when you have three plants and you're crossbreeding, which I wouldn't recommend doing anyway. You should be using at least four. Another thing to look out for is double reds. If you have a double red, it will always take priority over the greens, even the double greens. When I say double red, I mean an X and an X, or a W and a W. An X and a W does not count as a double red. It has to be the exact same type of red. Okay, so I've told you a whole bunch of rules, but what do they actually mean? Well, if you want to know the mathematics behind it, one green gene accounts for 0.6, one red gene accounts for 1.0. Therefore, when you're trying to figure out what gene will take priority, you just have to look for the gene with the highest number. So if you had a red X and a green G, you can see that the red X weighs more than the green G. Therefore, the X would take priority. But what happens if we had two Gs? Well, now you can see that if you add 0.6 to 0.6, the green G now weighs 1.2. 1.2 will take priority over the 1.0 X. Again, if we were to have two red X's, this would weigh 2.0, and 2.0 is still greater than 1.2. So even if you had two greens, or if you had three for that matter, it would only weigh 1.8. Therefore, always stay away from double reds, because double reds weigh 2.0, and the only way to get rid of a 2.0 is to have four of the exact same type of gene, which is extremely hard to do, and I can't stress this enough. So stay away from double reds. 
Remember also that you can't add different types of reds and you can't add different types of greens. Therefore, a G and a Y will only equal 0.6 of their each respective type. It will not equal 1.2. Same with a red X and a red W, you can't add the two together, they each carry their own individual weighting. Okay, on to actually crossbreeding. For your middle plant, which is the one that's going to crossbreed, you can just place a random seed, or you can place a clone, it doesn't matter. Because as I mentioned before, the middle crossbreeding plant does not factor in its own genetics when it's crossbreeding with others. That means when you're doing the gene counting and mathematics that I showed earlier, you don't actually put the middle seed up there on the table. You only count the neighboring genes as they're the ones that are going to determine the final genes makeup. So once you've done your gene counting and you know that they'll add up to give you a gene that you're happy with, then you take a random seed and place it in the middle. Then right before it hits crossbreeding stage, you can plant your outer genes. I try and aim to plant my outer genes in the later phase of my plant sapling stage. This is typically around the 17 to 20 minute mark, however the important thing is that you're doing it just before crossbreeding stage. If you're not living in the snow, then the perfect gene has two Y's and four G's. If you are anywhere near the cold, then I would recommend picking up a few H's and maybe replacing them for the G's. In order to get this perfect plant, there's a few methods you can go about getting it. One method that a lot of people do is they'll plant a whole bunch of seeds and then they'll run around picking up all of the seeds that have six greens, five greens, and personally I'll pick up any four green if all four of those greens are G's and Y's. I don't like to pick up H's because I don't typically build in the snow. Then once you've picked up a whole bunch of nice looking genes that are almost perfect, you mix them together and using the gene counting method I showed earlier, you can determine what the final gene would be. So I did this method and then about 30 seeds later I grabbed my best 5 and made sure that they lined up well. I made sure to count the doubles and in this case even triples and quads to ensure that my final genes would all be green and that they would be close to what I wanted. So because I only used about 30 seeds I couldn't be that picky with the ones that I picked up. Therefore my final solution results in two H's where I would rather have two G's. If I wanted to be more picky, I could keep planting random seeds and then maybe I could make a lineup which gets me my perfect clone. However, there's a faster way of changing only one to two genes. The 50-50 method is a technique I use which allows me to change one of the six genes of a plant I have. It only works when you have a near perfect plant. That means you have to have a plant which already has six greens. Then you can change one of those greens to a different green. For example, if you have an H and you would rather have a G, you can swap that over. In my example, my near perfect plant is GGH, GGH. This means that two of my H's I would rather have as Y's. So to keep things simple, we're gonna do it one step at a time. Let's say we wanna change the third gene into a Y. What we would need to do is duplicate our near perfect one. So now, as you can see, we have two of the near perfect clone. Then we have to go look for two different plants which both have a Y in the third slot, creating a double Y. As you can see here, I've illustrated it like this. But what do we want in those other slots? Well, this is what makes the technique so good. The only thing we need to pay attention to is making sure that the blue area doesn't have any more double ups. Because if it doesn't have a double up, this is what the resulting plant will look like. Every single one of those double ups will carry through, except for in the third slot where we have a double H and a double Y. When you have two double greens, they will have equal weighting, hence they will both try to take priority. Therefore, there will be a 50% chance that the Y comes through and a 50% chance that the H comes through. So I planted a bunch more seeds and then I ran around and picked up all of the seeds which had a Y in the third slot. Then I checked the two of the seeds that I picked up to see if they would line up to give me only a double Y. An easy way to do this is if you rapidly left click on either one of them, you can see all the genes changing except for the third one which stays constant as a Y. This indicates that it's only got a double Y in the third slot. And just to double check, we can count our genes. As you can see in the first slot, there's no doubles. Second, there's no doubles. In the third slot, we have our only double. Hence, it will be a 50-50. In the fourth, fifth, and sixth slot, there are no doubles. Hence, it will keep all of its original genes. Then once you've found your four plant lineup, place all the plants around a central random seed as I showed you how to do this earlier. 
Remember this technique only works 50% of the time, so make sure to make copies of each one of your clones so that you can keep doing this process until it works out for you. Then you would obviously just repeat this process for the sixth slot as I want to change that last H into a G. The quickest way I find crossbreeding is to by planting all your samples, running around and trying to create something that's near perfect and then finishing it off with the 50-50 method. However, another way that's just as easy and sometimes a little bit easier if you struggle with the first part is if you keep planting enough plants, eventually you'll just get a plant which has six greens on its own. Once you find a plant which has six greens on its own, you can solely rely on the 50-50 method because the 50-50 method, in my opinion, is a lot easier as you only have to worry about two genes making sure that they only have a double up in a certain spot. So if you're uncomfortable with the first part of crossbreeding, then just keep planting seeds until you get a six green one and then use the 50-50 method on its own. But it's completely up to you. Crossbreeding is just like any other skill. It takes time, patience, and practice. The more you do it, the quicker you'll get at it, and hence the more rewarding it will be. Farming 2.0 is extremely overpowered right now, as I showed you how to get thousands of scrap using a hemp farm. I'm extremely excited for the new updates, as Cooking 2.0 should be coming soon, and therefore abusing scrap prices won't be the only thing we can do with crossbreeding. A big shout out to all my viewers, as the growth on the channel has been insane, and I'm super grateful for everything. Thanks heaps for watching the video, like it if you did, dislike it if you didn't, and leave a comment if you have any questions or queries down below.